excited everybody. We are on a boat today. We're headed out of Pillar Point in Half Moon Bay, California, and we're gonna go for some rockfish. I'm super excited today because today I'm actually gonna use a couple of underwater cameras. Got a few of these underwater cameras provided by GoFish, and we're gonna see what's gonna be down there when we fish. I go for rockfish all the time, and I've always wondered, what are they doing? Are they just looking at my bait, or, or do they just come out of nowhere and smack it? Or do they really just examine it, and then think about it, and then go for it? But hopefully, today, we'll see. Let's go. Here we go, here we go. First drop, got my camera there. Got my line counter right here. Let's see. Hopefully I don't get snagged up. Drop in. Okay, about 62 feet deep, right there, 62 feet. With this first drop, I noticed that my swim bait immediately gets the attention of what looks like a blue rockfish that was down there. And as I'm passing through all this structure, you can see that it looks like it's mostly sandy here with some rocky patches. Here we come across a rockier reef and we see what looks like a decent sized gopher rockfish and a smaller blue rockfish. And here's a rockfish that nips at the swim bait. and a black rockfish comes and hits it. Here a pretty chunky cabzon comes and eyes my bait and it swims up and actually gently bites my weight. I feel this and I actually immediately jig up. That one. Notice how as I'm reeling up through the water column, there's a big school of fish that are just sitting in the middle of the column. And all these are blue rockfish. drop back down and immediately get smacked. And here I'm passing by a nice school of blues and blacks. And these blues are so aggressive, they're like the hyenas of the sea. And you'll see why later in this video. Strong current. I'm using a six ounce torpedo weight and the current's a little strong. Up above we're drifting at about one mile per hour, but below the current is actually lifting my swim baits off the bottom and fluttering them. 
and I'm passing by more fish here and then there's a rockfish that just comes and slams the weight and it does this several times and when I'm above I had no idea this was going on I thought my weight was literally just tapping structure and rocks down there and here I get the attention of a lingcod and if you don't know what a lingcod is they're aggressive predatory fish that inhabit the waters of the west coast of northern America and they have these crazy teeth look at how fast this lingcod comes in and strikes the swim bait let's rewind that and see that again And here's another lingcod, a bigger one, coming up to check out my bait. It follows it for a bit and then just cruises off. And there's possibly a canary rockfish that you can see in the background with that big lateral line stripe. But wait, this lingcod is back again. It's almost like it sniffed at it, thought it was going to smack it. But nope, it says, not today boys and literally just swims back down. I want you guys to notice how far above the seafloor I am now. I'm about 15 to 20 feet above, and this is where these rockfish start showing up here. And aggressive ones even smacks my weight, and it looks like it swallowed it. I'm dropping back down now. And a couple of blues swim up to check out the swim baits. And here there's lots of interested fish. And something even smacks the camera. Then watch, there's a real hungry fish that comes by. Hopefully we ran across a good school of them. So, that one out too. Small little. That's not a bad one. Okay. Another one, same thing. Not bad. Maybe we came across a good school of them. Hopefully got that on camera. On the underwater camera. You know? Bait still looks good. Everything looks good. Here you go. Back down. On this drop down, this is about 40 to 50 feet of water, and you can see once it hits the ground, it immediately gets the attention of an aggressive rockfish and a kelp greenling down there. And it looks like a pretty big kelp greenling. My estimate is it's about at least a 16 inch kelp greenling. And meanwhile, this is happening up above. Get that steelhead rod. You go back on again? That one looks, oh, that's a nicer fish too, Dad. Yeah, that one looks like a real nice one. <laughs> oh. Getting a bump? Yeah. Me oh, come on. There we go. Yep. Oh, we just passed by a good double up again. I wonder if I can mark this. <laughs> All right. It's probably not a bad idea. I mean, this is our first drift right now, you know? And uh, we're doing decent, doing pretty well. And this is what happened underwater on that bite. The first bump I felt was the greenling smacking the weight. 
and then an aggressive rockfish that was just laying in wait comes with zero hesitation and smacks the swim bait. Boom. Guy. Oh, oh, snap, 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 snap. All right, all right, man. On the bottom, Kai Tech again. We go back down again. Look, a well camouflaged California halibut comes into frame. Then I pass through a swarm of blue rockfish. Here, I'm gonna drop it back down. Drop it right back down. There you go, another bump. Ooh. And we're coming up on a huge shelf here, like a 20 foot rise. Here I'm about to drop right in front of a lingcod that doesn't even seem to bat an eye. And here we go, about to pass by a school of blue rockfish here. Running by a good school of them. I just had a bite again. Didn't hook up. These blues just continue following this one day, observing it. Let's go up to about 30 feet within the water column. There you go. Come on. Oh, 30 feet. He's right there at 30 feet. Yeah, it's smaller. Wow, yeah, 30 feet. Huh. Huh. Oh, I let go? Yeah, literally just came off. All right. Oh. This school of blues is thick. And they're just smacking everything from my swim baits to my weight and even my camera. They tore the tails off the swim bait. But here's what's interesting to me. Without the tail, these swim baits really have no action at all. But they sort of look just like tubes. Maybe even look like a worm. But these blues continue smacking it like there's no tomorrow. Oh man, look. 
Dang, something chomped off the tail of both my my swim bait. If you wanted to drop that guy back down, I've got a live bait rig. Oh yeah, I've got one too. Yeah. Huh. Dude. You know what? I might do that. We're gonna send this blue right back down and this is what we see. The angle isn't the best with the live bait rig, but we see a rockfish that comes and thumps my weight a few times. And then something comes and smacks the side of the camera hard. And then look, this lingcod, probably about 28 inches or so, comes up interested in the bait. And then decides, nah, and swims back down. Oh, but here comes a ling. It's grabbing on, and I and I feel it. I feel the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I go and set the hook. Nope, missed it. And it's gonna come right back around. Missed it again. Oh, it's something. I feel like something's chasing it. The battery for the underwater cam dies, so I end up switching back to swim baits after changing the battery. Well, hello there, Mr. Ling. It's definitely stalking the swim baits right now. It might look like the link cut is gone now, but I think it's actually continuing to stalk the swim baits off screen. And at the right moment, it comes with zero hesitation. And bam, lucky for that link cod, it didn't get hooked and it spits it. Here I'm gonna drop back down again. And sucks that my underwater cam battery died. So I couldn't get this hit. That's a nice one. Oh, nice. Ooh. Don't lose them. <laughs> Gonna release them already? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Is it on there? Yeah. In the net? Uh, I don't know. Feels decently heavy. Yeah, your rod bent down more than it was before. Probably a ling. Didn't feel didn't feel too heavy, but it's not really fighting anymore. Yep, yep, yep. Zip. Yep. Oh, another one. Another decent bite. Lighter, but it's probably close to that's good. Yep. Inside? Yep. Yeah. Deeper? Uh, uh, it's probably it's close it's again. Worth the measure. Close to the other one again. Yeah. Uh, it looks short. It's about the same as the other one. I think it's 21 and a half. <laughs> Later. All 
All right, all right, time to throw my camera back on one last time, and then I got snagged. Uh-oh, snagged. Got my camera there. Yeah, that's the scary part. And this is the scariest part when you have a camera down there and you're snagged. Why that got stuck. So it looks like the hook broke off, so now I'm fishing with just one swim bait. And here's where I capture some pretty interesting things down there. You can see that when I drop, it's mostly sandy, but with just a few rock formations. You guys see that? A huge halibut comes by and casually just kisses my camera and swims off. My swim bait's five inches long. And the paddle of that tail is, you can see, is farther from the camera. And it seems like it might be close to a foot in width, which would make this a huge halibut. And during the same drift, this happens. This is a huge lingcod looking directly at the camera and not even at the swim bait at all. This lingcod is behind the swim bait and its head appears way bigger than the swim bait itself. Here we're gonna pass by more of a reef, and this is where more rockfish start showing up. You can see that this lingcod is really, really interested in the swim bait, and it's gonna to continue to follow it for a bit. Without any bites, I end up throwing on two swim baits again. Here I get snagged up and you ever wonder what happens? Sometimes I even get bites when I'm snagged, and this is why. In this case, I got stuck between two rocks, and then you can see that the fish actually seem to flock to the bait out of curiosity. And this is a perfect time to enjoy the diversity of the fish that inhabit these rocky reefs. I was so happy to see that my camera was still on, and so I dropped back down, and it looks like immediately I'm in front of a lingcod. 
and you'll see that this reef seems to be lingcod central. There are just so many lingcod and not a lot of rockfish. But after this, we decided to head back in. All right, back on shore now. And we had a decent day. We were out there just for a few hours. Couldn't really fish for too long. I got a little seasick, but here's what we came up with. A couple of decent link cod, and then we stumbled upon, upon a bunch of rockfish. All right, I hope you all found this video to be informative, educational, and even entertaining. I know there are a few things in this footage that really, really surprised me. One, I found out that these fish actually come up to your bait. They might examine it for a while. I mean, for a long while, swim with it, keep looking at it, and then decide whether or not they wanna, they wanna eat that or not. There are some fish, you drop it down right in front of them, and they could give zero. They really don't care about it, right? And I don't know why. It could be that they're really not hungry, they're not in that feeding stage, who knows. And then there's some fish that see your bait and literally just instinct, they just can't resist, and they come in out of nowhere and just smack it. What was really surprising to me was that I found out that these fish are actually attracted, I think this might be the right word, attracted to the weights that I use. And people oftentimes use these torpedo weights as their sinkers, and it kind of looks like a tube. And so who knows, that might look like some sort of juicy worm maybe? To me it doesn't, but to the fish, maybe. All I know is by looking at this footage here, you could see that they're just constantly just smacking that weight over and over and over again. So in my opinion, these weights are probably the best weights to use when it comes to rock fishing offshore. In my personal experience, it not only gets me snagged less than other weights, but it actually serves as an attractant to your fish. Hey, that's a win-win to me. Last but not least, I'd like to thank some people. Daryl and Danny, you know who you are. Uh, thank you so much. I'd like to thank the team at Go Fish Cam for providing these cameras for me. Uh, they seem to work really well. It has a little night light where I could see. That's why I could drop this all the way down 100 feet and I could still see these fish on the bottom. And they seem to be rugged. It seems to work well. I mean, this one's already got some teeth marks on it, probably from that big halibut that bit at it. That's my guess. I don't, I don't know, but hey, they, they work. So thank you to the team, especially Brandon and Brian, uh, for hooking me up with, with these cameras here so I could get the footage for all you guys. And of course, thank you all for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. This is what really drives me to keep creating content. I don't think many of you know, but uh, I don't do this full-time. I'm a full-time student. I'm actually at the end stages of a PhD program in biology. So whenever I do have time, um, I try to go out. I do enjoy doing this. So I try to go out, get outdoors, do some filming, do some editing, and of course, get you guys this content. And without you know support from you guys, I, why would I be doing this? So thank you all so much uh, for that. So with that said, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.